Uh, I'm uh, the market manager, uh, or one of the market managers for Creators. Um, we're based out of uh, Chicago, Illinois, and have been out and have been so now for 126 years. Um, Creators is actually. Uh, I'm going to do a little background. Here, kind of a kind of a cool little story. Um, Creators was started back in 1885 by. Uh, uh, Charles Creters. Um, he actually first invented the uh, steam-powered peanut roaster. Um, he tried his hand at other items, uh, bicycles even, uh, some other things. Um, came out with the uh, peanut roaster and um, essentially started C. Creters and Company. Um, about eight years later, at uh, uh, an, an event called the uh, uh, World's uh, Columbian Exposition, he came out with the first steam-powered popcorn popper that uh, popped popcorn in oil which actually completely revolutionized the concession industry. Um, now not only were vendors able to uh, produce popcorn, but they could be mobile with it. So rather than pop it at one location and have to take their product to different locations, you can now pop it at the, at the site of the fair or at the theater or wherever the event is um, going on. So he actually, he actually came out with, um, with horse-drawn carts that would they would, they would have these popcorn poppers and peanut roasters and, and beer and, and whatever else, and you can move it from event to event. And so he does get accredited with um, starting the concession industry, um, which, is a, which is a pretty cool fact. Um, and the fair that I speak of, um, I don't know if any of you are uh, big readers at all, but there's a book out called uh, Devil in the White City, and it's all about the, the, this World's Fair, this, this Columbian Exposition that took place in Chicago. Um, it doesn't mention the uh, Creators popper in there, but it does mention other items, um, you know, like uh, uh, what are some of the things? Um, some items that they thought, oh, this is never going to make it. And then, 100 and some years later, you know, the Ferris wheel was first introduced there. So it's just a lot of a lot of cool items that, are, uh, that were introduced there amongst the uh, Creators popper. popper. But, um, so last year we just celebrated um, 125 years. Um, the company has been family owned and operated for for five generations now. Um, Andrew Creators is the current uh, is the current president. His dad, Charlie, a few years back, stepped down as president, but he's now our uh, chief um, uh, engineer and CEO of the company. So he's very engineer-minded. He still likes to get his hands dirty in uh, designing uh, the creator's equipment. So, um, but uh, some of the some of the products, I just kind of want to give you a, a brief overview. I'm not going to take up quite as much of your time since I know now that the um, the demonstration is going to take place in a separate room. But um, some of the products that we do make, as Justin said, you're probably all familiar with our popcorn poppers. Um, that's what the company started out with. Um, it's what we've made for 100 plus years now. Um, you're probably most, most familiar with our uh, uh, wet poppers, which is popcorn popcorn oil, obviously. Um, we do anywhere from four ounce kettles up to 60 ounce kettles. Um, those can be the suspended poppers or they can be the pedestal poppers as well. Um, what I find amazing about, about your guys' group is that Man, you guys just keep stuff running forever. I mean, you guys just, <laughs> that's that uh, cheap yeah. SOB thing I was talking about. <laughs> uh, just being at the uh, Utah, you know, I don't know. I think you know, probably sixty percent of the people I talked to who had a Creators popper, they've had it for forty or fifty years, um, and that's and that. What's that? Sorry, sixty years. Sixty years, yeah, sixty years. So it didn't go far enough, and. Uh, um, and they just, every now and then I have to get some parts. Yeah, yeah and, you know, we, we still, that's the great thing about us, we still, do, we, we still do make them. Um, we think it's great that you guys keep that, keep that stuff running. We'd love to sell you a new one, but if you want to, with those old ones, you get that seasoning over the years and it's tough to beat that, tough to beat that, uh, <coughs> that taste. Um, but, uh, so we do have a, a, a wide array of uh, poppers, uh, or wet poppers. We also have another separate division called the flow through division, which is um, completely hot air pop popcorn. That's uh, more on the industrial level. Um, we're the only company in the world that manufactures these uh, industrial sized hot air poppers. So companies such as uh, Cracker Jack, Frito-Lay, Malto Meal, they all use our, our products. Um, it's, it's not just popcorn, but it's also uh, puffers as well. So a lot of the cereal that you guys eat comes from the machines that we manufacture on it and it's industrial level. And those are used um, worldwide. And again, that's, I'm on the retail side, so I don't have much to do with that. We have another completely separate division. So. Uh, for that, but um, we also have, in addition to popcorn poppers, um, we have a very nice hot dog grill. We have uh, a few different options for that. We have a 24 count grill. We just came out with a 36 count grill, and we also have a hot dog broiler, which is a little cradle broiler that a lot of people like to. Uh, uh, it's visually uh, enticing. Um, and uh, as Justin said, he initially contacted me for our uh, cotton candy machine. Um, we do we have an excellent cotton candy machine, and it uh, was um, uh, surprising to me that uh, maybe not a lot of people have, have actually heard about it. Um, we have three different models. They're all referred to as the, uh, the Ringmaster. Uh, the different models actually refer to the amount of output that each machine does. 
Um, the machine that I have here is called the Ringmaster Lite. It's our, it's our smallest uh, production cotton candy machine, but it's probably the most popular machine for um, theater locations. Um, it'll do about uh, eight to 10 pounds of product an hour. Uh, it does use a five inch head. Um, we also, uh, the, the next step up is just a little bit of, uh, a little bit bigger of a motor, but it's a, uh, just the Ringmaster 5. It also has a five inch head, but a little bit bigger of a motor. It does about 10 to 12 pounds of product an hour. And then our biggest one is the Ringmaster 7. It has a much larger seven inch head and it will do about 15 to 18 pounds an hour. Um, I know that there were maybe some questions on the amount of uh, um, how many cones or six you can, you can do per hour. I'm not quite sure about that. Um, it just probably depends on the operator. Me, I can, I could probably do about 10 because I'm not real good at it, but uh, some of you other guys could probably crank out about 100 to 150 probably. Um, but what's great about this show is I was able to ship down some um, equipment and um, I have it all set up back there. So come 11 o'clock uh, to 1 o'clock, I think we have, we can come on around. I brought a lot of cones. You guys can take a shot and show me um, how, how bad I am at it. So and just take a shot at it. I got a lot of uh, cotton candy floss and um, um, can come away with some cotton candy from this thing. So. Um, but some other machines we have, uh, we still manufacture uh, peanut roasters as well. Um, we also have a nice uh, gourmet line. Um, I'm not sure if anybody here does caramel corn at any of their locations, but uh, caramel corn is making a very nice comeback in a lot of the a lot of the indoor theaters, at, at least, um, especially over on the West Coast. Um, the products that they use of ours, we have what's called a, a caramelizer machine. Um, you now you can make caramel corn inside the kettle of your, of your popper using a, uh, a glaze pop. Um, and it, it tastes pretty good still, but I still think the best way to do it is to pop your corn, make your caramel glaze separately, and then pour your popcorn into that caramelizer and coat it using that caramelizer machine. Um, we have three different sizes of those, uh, two that you'd probably be um, uh, more comfortable with. It's uh, they were called CND25 and CND50. Well, those numbers refer to the amount of product you can do per hour. Um, so it's actually, as many of you probably know, when you're, when you're making caramel corn, you're actually making candy with that glaze. So your um, whatever your recipe happens to be, everybody varies. Um, you can use, we have a very nice uh, base caramel product that you just, you can add water to it and it has all the other ingredients, the uh, sugar and, and uh, whatnot, and you just add your popcorn. You can throw butter in with it, you can throw vanilla, cinnamon, whatever you want to, um, um, but uh, kind of make the recipe your own and then throw your popcorn with it and it just, it's an excellent product. Um, the theaters that we have uh, that I know of that are, that are using it anyways, um, they can't make it fast enough. It's still, a, it's still a great profit margin, I think very close to that of, of popcorn. Um, you do charge a little bit more for it, but there's a little bit more profit involved. Um, but yeah, they just, they, they love it, they can't make it fast enough, and those that are now trying it, um, wonder why they weren't doing it years ago. So, um, again, I'm not sure if any of you do it right now, but um, maybe something to, to think about, because that, in addition to, uh, to a cheese corn and just different flavored corn, uh, really are making a comeback. And also just the, uh, just the visual perspective of making that, making that, um, that kind of popcorn. Um, if you'll notice when you, Chicago is a very big um, caramel corn hub, uh, pro probably the caramel corn hub of the world. And what a lot of the caramel corn shops do there, um, if you'll notice, their, their locations, they're not really around other food locations. They're not in a food court at a, at a mall, they're not uh, by a restaurant. They're sort of in their own and very impulse areas. Um, so they're between maybe two clothing stores or jewelry stores or, or whatnot. And a lot of them, what they'll do is they'll take their ventilation system and they will pump that scent that they're making and they just pump that out in the street. And there's been times when I've been downtown about uh, nine o'clock or so and I'm, I'm still full from breakfast or so I think and I, I smell that stuff and well, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. So um, it works. It's, as you guys know, popcorn's a very impulse buy. And if they, especially when people can see that process, it's, a, it's sort of a complex but um, fun process to watch. So you watch them use that caramelizer, you watch them make that cheese corn and that coated mixer tumbler, and they're very intrigued by it, and then they see that fresh product. And the people are, they're all about fresh product. Um, uh, as you guys know, with uh, popping popcorn, when, you, when you're popping popcorn, that's, uh, that fresh popcorn, it's not really the best to eat right out of the kettle. It's once, it, once it's had a chance to uh, um, sort of dry up a little bit, um, and, and then it gets that crunchiness to it. Uh, but people, they, it, it doesn't matter. They see it coming out right out of the kettle, the kettle and they'll say, I want, I want that popcorn right there. And, Hell, if they're going to pay for it, then give it to them. So, um, but, um, so those are some of the, uh, of the products we offer. We also have a nice array of uh, warmers, in-counter warmers, uh, countertop, um, butter toppers as well, uh, bag and box in-counter, countertop too. Um, we have a nice nacho line. Um, nachos are tough to compete with because a lot of the nacho cheese providers will provide you with their own cheese, excuse me, cheese pumps, so it's 
kind of silly not to go that route. Um, but if you ever didn't want to, we could certainly talk about that. Um, and as Justin said, Fred Blank unfortunately wasn't able to make it. Um, we do work very closely with uh, with Fred, and we, and we do practice a uh, distribution network um, throughout the uh, throughout the states here. Um, so what I did is I called Fred up and um, wanted to see if he wanted to do some uh, special show pricing uh, for you guys in case you might be interested in, in some of this equipment. So I do have some brochures, and you guys have a chance to uh, to come by. You can take a look at some of the show pricing. Um, Fred, I think I think we're at about 25 or 30 percent off um, on most of the items, and so. Um, he's offering that through the end of the year for delivery um, until May, I think. So, um, so pretty good, pretty good uh, price offer there if you guys uh, happen to be interested. So, um, but um, those are some of the products that I'm excited about uh, having you guys stop over and we can make a mess of that uh, cotton candy machine. And um, and yeah, so I guess that's some information I have for you. So if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to have to help you out now or or when you stop by and take. The uh, 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 Fred Blank. Uh, the information for Fred Blank is uh, the contact info is in is in your uh, program uh, under the business card area. So yeah, definitely uh, give him a call if that's something you're interested. I I can't wait to go in there and check out the, uh, the sale prices. Uh, it's tough to squeeze a nickel out of Fred. I'll tell you that <laughs> the, in, in the times I've dealt with him. But but he's very supportive and, and he'll work with you. And I'm excited to see that. Uh, uh, I know Mark Murray, he's probably at the higher end of the 150 bag or whatever production line. At least that's what he tells me. I've not seen him in action, but given that he's had a fairly successful drive and he has to pump that stuff out, he's open year round and, and he's the one who's about to have all five screens digital. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that he means what he says. Mm -hmm. That uh, I'm hoping when he gets here that uh, we'll have him get the, maybe the first line to, so he can just start whipping that stuff out. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, I, I was out, you know, before I was coming down here, I like to, uh, if I'm ever going to demo a machine, I like to kind of uh, get one out of the office and just kind of play with it a little bit to make sure I'm up to snuff on it. And uh, um, so I'm anxious to see how, we, you know, everybody, my boss, you know, she twirls it this way, our engineers twirl it this way. And, they both do it good, and then I go there and I mess it up either way I do it. So but just we'll, we'll see, that, see how it goes. But um, I will talk a little bit about the machine um, just to maybe give you guys a better background of it. Um, I think that there's a few things that separate our cotton candy machine apart. Um, we do use uh, a tubular heating element um, in there to, to heat the cotton candy floss. I think some of our competitors maybe have moved to that by now. Um, but previously, I think a lot of them used uh, ribbons and bands uh, for the for the heating elements, which those tend to, uh, I think you need to replace those maybe once a year, once every two years possibly. Um, with this tubular heating element, you, you don't replace it for about 10 years. And as long as you take good care of your machine, it's going to last for, for quite a long time. Um, yes? How much time would it take to clean it? To clean it? That's a good question. Um, our machine is basically self-cleaning. Um, what you, and we can take a look at it in there towards the end. Um, what you essentially do is you want to keep it running until, um, if, if you're too clean in time, you want to keep it running until all the cotton candy floss has, has come out of the machine. Um, the reason for that being is because the, the process, again, as many of you know, is um, what you're doing is you're melting that sugar to a liquid form, and then once it's, um, the, the centrifugal force is causing that liquid to then shoot out of that uh, mesh screen. Uh, once it hits that cool air, it automatically becomes that solid form again and then it sticks to the outside. Um, if you happen to shut it down uh, before emptying it out, it's actually going to, that, that liquid form is going to stick to that, that mesh sheet and it's going to, and it's going to carbonize that, so, uh, that machine, which I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen with maybe your cotton candy machine, probably especially your uh, popcorn poppers. Um, if you have some of those older poppers, you've, you've seen a lot of that black carbon start to form on the inside or outside of the, of the kettle. So, uh, but once you, so once you go ahead and um, you just let all that floss come out, uh, you're going to go ahead and shut the machine down just, just for a few seconds, kind of let everything settle. You're going to turn the heat all the way up, turn it on again, and it's going to throw everything, throw everything out of that, uh, out of that head. So, so really, as far as cleaning the head part of it, which would be the base paint, you don't really have to do that. I would recommend maybe taking it apart once in a one, once in a great while, uh, but you shouldn't really need to because you're because you're shooting everything out of that uh, out of that head and into the bowl, and then cleaning the bowl is just, uh, just take it over to the sink or just or just wipe it down. So, but we can take a look at that towards the end of the So, um, that's a good question. Um, so, the, so the heating element's nice, um, and also the uh, the the mesh screen that I was talking about that the cotton candy floss shoots out of. Um, I, ours is a it's, it's a stainless steel material. Um, I think again, I, I don't know if our competitors have moved towards this yet, but I think 
some of them maybe use like a, almost like a porcelain type material for that screen that does tend to crack and you need to, to, to replace it uh, quite a bit. So um, we do, when, when we do manufacture our machines or engineer our machines, we try to take into account any, anything that can possibly happen to it, we, we, we try to avoid it. And you, we know that a lot of times younger people might be operating these machines and, and a lot of used to break things when I was a lot younger and, and we try to think of any, any, any which way you can possibly break the machine, whether you're you know, 14, 15, 16 years old up to you know, 50, 60, 70 years old. We try to manufacture our machines with the quality so that that can be avoided, uh, but also being able to do things such as clean the machine very easily without them and make it okay. So, um, but those are, I think, some of the items that, that, that do set our machines apart. Um, they're made with, uh, with quality. Um, the uh, many repair techs that, that I have talked to that, um, that do um, see our machines and maybe have to replace a part of our machines, they, they love working on them. They're simple, uh, simple to work on and easy access. Um, so I haven't, you know, that's, that's why the machines I chose to put here are popcorn poppers, hot dog grills, and cotton candy machines, because those are what we get some great feedback on. Yes, sir. And, and how long, sorry? 20 to 30 minutes. I, again, it just kind of depends on the on, on the user, to be honest with you. Um, I I know I know the amount the amount of output it can do, but I'm not sure it'll do like this one here will do about eight to ten pounds of uh, product per hour. Um, I'm not really sure on the amount of servings. I did I talked to one of our engineers yesterday, and he had a he did a he did a thing where he worked on one for about an hour, and he just couldn't find that information for the time. So. Um, yeah, no, that's, that's a good question. He's asking how, um, basically, how, how messy the process of making cotton candy can be. Um, it can be it can be fairly messy, but there's ways to avoid that. You might as well see in the uh, machine that I have here. I do have a half bowl that, that I brought along and helps contain some of that. Um, uh, but overall, I mean, making cotton candy is just it's just a, it's a fairly messy process, but it's a profitable. One. You know, I mean, the, the uh, profit margin on cotton candy is very incredible. That of we, we make ours on Thursday nights when the projectors aren't running because the straight get to get in the air and they can suck through the lane pass. And the last thing we want is cotton candy in the black book. So, so, so you know, especially with the especially with the digital transition now, yeah. um, there's there's a lot of uh, um, a lot of good questions like that that need to be taken into account with digital now. Um, our ventless hoods for our popcorn poppers have gotten a lot of attention because supposedly if the if the grease if your filter is not good enough, that grease can make its way to the to the digital uh, projector and, and mess up the lens, which I understand is not a cheap piece to replace. So I mean that's, that's a good question and that's very good feedback. So any other questions at all? Yes, Hey, you have uh, brochures there you say after your display? Yes, I do. Yep. I've got okay. these. Uh, I made up some brochures to come down here. Um, uh, basically says, you know, we're uh, working with uh, Fred Blank at Tri-State. Um, so you can contact him for any, uh, any additional pricing that you want. These are just a few items that we have on here. But if you're interested in any other items, I'd be happy to, to work with you on the uh, pricing for that. Um, I have my cards there as well. I'm always happy to, happy to answer any questions that you do have. Um, and again, a lot of times with your end users, we still maintain great relationships with them. I mean, we, even though we may not sell directly, uh, but we do, we do talk to the end user um, uh, quite, quite free, uh, frequently. We'd love to get feedback. I mean, um, we, don't know, we don't know how good a machine really is until it actually gets it, out into the field and, um, and experiences good and bad issues. Um, you know, we just, uh, our hot dog grill, the 36 count grill, uh, we just came out with it. And, um, this actually worked out really well because we had one testing at a, uh, a showbiz theater here in, um, here in uh, I believe it was, I'm going to push this name, Wasa, Wasa Hex? Wasa Hex, there you go, sorry about that. Um, so I went down there last night uh, because they're having some issues with it. But it's a brand new machine and, and I'd rather have the issues now and um, so we you know, went down there and, and got everything figured out and um, got some great feedback. So I mean, this is why I like coming to these, to these shows because it's not all about me getting out here trying to sell stuff, it's getting good feedback uh, from you guys on how we can um, and improve our products. And I, and, I, and I do like, some people are hesitant about uh, giving that because I think it might make you feel better or whatnot, but I, I, I like to hear it because I'm going to on, on how we do things. So, um, but, uh, so yeah, I mean, we've, we've got these brochures here with my contact information, Fred's contact information, uh, some show prices, and then um, once we uh, break out about 11 o'clock, we go over and Make some cotton candy and get you guys a nice uh, little gut bomb before the afternoon session. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, very good. Watch.